All right, guys, moving on in our rational number series. In this video, we are going to be talking about a reduction method. So uh, in order to be able to work with rational numbers, we're going to need uh, to have uh, something that's able to deal with fractions of, let's say, I don't know, 3 over 6. So now, if you've ever learned math, you know that 3 over 6 can actually be simplified to 1 over 2. Um, and let's just go ahead and write the, uh, the, the function uh, definition here. Um, so this is going to be a rational, um, and it, we're going to call it reduction. And as a parameter, of course, it's going to receive um, a rational. Now, I'm making it a const just so that we don't lose any of the, uh, the function, any, any of the rational numbers, uh, definitions, or all that stuff. Um, it's, like, it's not required to understand what's going on, but uh, I'm just going to leave it like that and I'm going to put an ampersand there. This is also not required. I mean, the function will work properly, um, but it just looks a lot better. So, and we're going to call the parameter, we're going to call it underscore res as in result, and I'm just going to make that also a constant. Um, and yeah, so now what we can do in C-Line is we can right click over here, we can do show context actions and then generate a definition. All right, so now we are here ready to define the actual method. Uh, and for a second, I just want to go back here and explain uh, something about reduction of functions. So um, we have a fraction. Okay, three over six, and the way to reduce it is we actually need something called the greatest common factor, so the GCF. Um, and to find that, what I'm gonna do, it's not you know an insanely, it's not an insanely smart thing to do, but this is just how I roll. Um, what I do is I look at the uh, at the de denominator, denominator, and I'm going to start by uh, checking if this number modulo itself and it also needs to go into the numerator uh, if they're both equal to zero okay so if they're both equal to zero that means that they ha it has no remainder and that's what we're looking for we're looking for uh, if the GCF or the, the number uh, divided by both the denominator, denominator and the numerator both uh, are at zero. So I'm just going to check all the numbers starting from this number all the way down. So um, let's see, let's do six. Okay, so we actually, uh, let's do six modulo six, um, that equals to zero, that's fine but then six modulo three does not equal to zero. So let's check five. So let's do six modulo five, and that of course uh, does not equal to zero. So we can cross that out. Now let's do six modulo four. Uh, that of course does not equal to zero. And if the first one doesn't equal to zero, then I don't actually need to check um, if it goes into the uh, numerator because I'm not interested in that. All right, now let's check three. So six modulo three, the remainder will actually be zero. And guess what? Three modulo three, the remainder of that will also be equal to zero. Now, if you're not able to follow, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to put a link in the video description uh, how to reduce functions so you can get a better understanding. I, I seem to think that I'm not explaining it so well here. Um, but if you get the general idea, then we can actually go on to uh, start writing our code. Um, and we're going to actually start the code uh, like this. We're going to declare an integer. We're going to call it new num, as a new uh, numerator. And we're going to make this equal to the um, result dot uh, numerator. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make new den and we're going to make this equal to res dot denominator denominator and what we're going to do is we're going to make the first uh, condition because we're going to go like this if new den uh, is smaller than zero okay so obviously if it's smaller than zero then that means that there's a minus sign on one of the um, 
um, you know, either the numerator or denumerator. So let's also do new num uh, is also smaller than zero. Okay, so if they're both minus, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do new den uh, equals times minus one. We're just gonna times it by minus one. And of course I needed to do times equals minus one. That just means uh, we're going to times it by minus one. And we're also going to do the same thing for the uh, numerator. So let's do new num times equals minus one. All right. So once that that's done, we're just taking care of if the fraction uh, has two negative signs. And now I'm just going to take care of on else if just one of them else if new den is below zero. Um, for now, it's the only thing we care about. New den equals minus one. You know what, let's just, I'm actually to save time, just gonna copy and paste. Once we've taken care of those two situations, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a for loop and I'm actually going to uh, take care of this. So I'm gonna make it start at, uh, instead of I starting at zero, it's going to start at the denominator. Okay, like I said, I'm starting with six. And then it's going to keep running as long as i is bigger than one. Okay, because if i is bigger than one, it's not relevant anymore. Um, because, you know, I don't, I don't want anything being uh, less than one. We're going to, instead of doing i plus plus, we're going to do i minus minus. Because we want to start from the largest number, like we did here, six, and then make our way down. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create my condition. So I'm going to do if new uh, new. Let's start with the numerator um, modulo i. Okay, you could put spaces here if you want to make it a little bit clearer. Uh, equals equals zero. So we want to make sure that the uh, there's no remainder. And new den modulo i equals equals zero. Okay, so if we found the greatest uh, common factor or the GCF, so actually I'm going to write notes here because I want you guys to also get used to writing notes. Okay, let's do we found the, all right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do new num um, divided equals i. We're just going to divide it by i and the same for the uh, denominator. And yeah, that's it. What we're going to do, uh, the final thing for this method is we have to make it, declare a new uh, rational number and we can do rational result. The, this is our new result. Um, we're going to declare it and then we have to set the values. So we're going to do uh, that way. And then what we're going to do is return result. This will actually return the reduced fraction. All right, so we've successfully created the reduction method and now we're ready to move on.